So this is the hot flash conversation, ladies. If I've lost you in my in my nerd speak, uh, it's basically when we are seeing wildly oscillating levels of estrogen, we can get wildly oscillating vasodilating and vasoconstricting um, levels of like the, the vasculature can be opening and closing. And that's the hot sweats. That's the, the night sweats um, that we can experience overnight. And I'll also say that the the person who experiences hot flashes as well, I've noticed and this is not true for everyone, but I'll say with the women that I have spoken to, um, there there is kind of a phenotype of a woman who uh, does experience a lot of hot flashes. It's not all the time, but mostly it's a woman who's been chronically stressed for most of her life where she hasn't dealt with some of the you know, issues of her childhood, issues of her adult life. Um, and then when we are moving in perimenopause and menopause, of course, the ovaries are now handing off their responsibility of estrogen production, uh, progesterone production, uh, testosterone production over to the adrenals. So if the adrenals are already taxed because you've been a stress case for 30 years, uh, you're not going to be a very good producer, let's say, of these sex hormones from the adrenal glands. So as vague as stress management sounds, like you got to get a handle on your stress, right? And I talked about this in the perimenopause masterclass. So if you want a refresher, please go back and listen to the first, ep- there's two episodes, masterclass one and two. Um, please listen to the first one because we spend a big major, a, a large majority of our time talking about ways to stress manage, how stress management impacts our autonomic system, which we've touched on today, our sleep quality, our mood, our affect, all of the things. All right, let's move to, uh, let's move over and talk a little bit about vasopressin. So um, vasopressin is an interesting hormone. Um, It is, it's called the antidiuretic hormone. So we're going to talk in a little bit of double negative speak, which is always difficult for the, for uh, even for me as an English speaker, but an antidiuretic hormone means that you are not going to be peeing overnight. Okay. So vasopressin is involved in allowing you to just accumulate the urine overnight without, you know, let's say you're without urinating, uh, or having to wake up to, to go urinate. Now, as we age, guess what happens to vasopressin? It's like, you guessed it, it decreases. So we have a decrease in vasopressin as a function of aging, which is why some women will also wake up um, overnight because they have to pee. We also see this in men too. There's a couple of different reasons for men. We also see some benign, pro- you know, we see, uh, the prostate is enlarging and there's, um, uh, there's some other issues that are going on with the guys, but, um, women will, we have sort of this unique challenge because we want to stay hydrated, but we don't want to, we don't want to be waking up overnight to pee. Right. So vasopressin in terms of what it does is it, it, it holds or maintains the appropriate amount of water volume in the space it surrounds cells and it arouse, uh, allows for proper cellular function. So it's a, it's a circadian hormone. So it will, um, uh, it's, it's going to be more uh, active overnight, obviously, because we don't want to be peeing overnight. Uh, it also helps maintain the body's internal temperature, right? So uh, internal temperature, blood volume, and then proper flow of urine um, from the kidneys. So if there are some things that are going to negatively affect vasopressin that you can do right now. So even though we know that we naturally have declining levels of vasopressin, um, things like um, drinking alcohol, any type of alcohol, doesn't matter what kind, will inhibit the antidiuretic hormones. This is the negative, the double speak that I was talking about. So if you inhibit an antidiuretic, you are going to get a diuretic, which is why you are going to wake up several times overnight to pee if you've had, you know, one glass or several glasses of wine. So alcohol has an inhibitory effect on um, vasopressin. The other thing uh, that you want to be thinking about in terms of limiting your, uh, let's say, frequent trips to the bathroom overnight is limiting your liquid consumption overnight. So um, I often uh, will ask patients to uh, or clients to keep a journal if this is a big problem for them. Like when was your last when was your last uh, intake of liquid? And we also have to include meals in that because our body can extract a lot of liquid from the foods that we're eating. Um, so when did you drink? How much did you drink? And and when did you pee? So kind of learning your transit time. Like I've sort of learned myself that I have about a 45 minute 
you know, by the time, if I finish a, you know, cup of bone broth, which is typically, I usually have that in the evening. It's, I'm, it's about 45 minutes later when I got to go to the bathroom, right? So what is your transit time learning about that? So then you can sort of create a, okay, I need to make sure that I stop drinking at least 45 minutes in my case, or an hour, let's say, prior to going to sleep uh, so that I can limit the need to wake up um, over overnight. <laughs> 